All right, YouTube, so we are back, of course, to talk about some Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we're back again to talk about the ending of the Yuffie DLC, and I want to kind of go over what some of the theories are out there, kind of discuss those, and also some details that I personally had missed by watching this. First up, I'm using Shiraco's video. Again, obviously, I don't have the PS5 or access to this DLC, so I have to use somebody else's, like, upload, and Shiraco's pretty consistent with uploading cutscenes and endings from video games. So jumping right into it and jumping pretty far ahead within this cutscene, pretty close to the end before the Zack stuff, when our group gets dropped off, we actually see Calm in the background. Now, I completely missed this and wasn't looking out for Calm in the background. I think for starters, because I watched in Japanese, so I didn't know what was being said. So I didn't know they even mentioned Calm at all. They obviously mentioned it if you watch it in English. But also the fact that they're still within like a desert kind of setting. And as we know Calm to be, it's like kind of in a grassy plains area. There's still like kind of a wasteland sort of deserty setting around Calm in the original FF7. But the town itself sits within like a grassy area. So that's kind of what my mind goes to when I think of Calm on the world map. But I guess maybe they went with like a different design choice for Calm potentially when it comes to Remake. But there might be a reason for it and we'll come back to this a little bit later in the video because there's something I kind of want to add to it. Something else I miss again because I watch in Japanese is that the guy driving the truck that they hitch a ride in is Chocobo Bill. Which is Chocobo Bill is in the original Final Fantasy VII. He's the guy that owns or runs the Chocobo farm. So this ending cutscene gave us our first little tease of Calm, like kind of in the distance, but we're able to still see it. And then also with the existence of Chocobo Bill confirms that the Chocobo Farm location also does exist within Remake. Because I was wondering, it's kind of a weird location, right? You do get like the Chocobo lore, you learn about Chocobos, riding Chocobos, you can skip over the Midgar Zalm if you want to. But I didn't know if it was like a necessary location that they would also put into Remake, but it seems like it is. All right, on to the more important stuff, debatably, my dudes. So, with the ending when we see Zack, people are still debating on whether or not he is or isn't alive. And this is based on several different things. Like, for him being dead still, potentially. There's a lot of time between Zack's last stand, which is the where he dies, or I guess with the remake doesn't die, and the destruction of Sector 7, which is what we're thinking with the refugees inside the church, or the people inside the church. So, with the, the amount of time between those two events, it's kind of weird how long it took him to try to go to the Sector 5 church to see Aerith. Like, why wouldn't he get to Midgar, drop Cloud off somewhere where he can get help, get safe, and then immediately go to find Aerith. Like, you think that he would do that. There's a lot of time, like, what, what has Zack been doing this whole time? That's a question a lot of people are asking. We also have stuff like Zack not seeming to be aware of, like, the amount of destruction that's happened within Midgar. Also, whenever he goes through the doors, we get the white light behind him, which we've seen at the end of Remake whenever Zack and Aerith pass each other, but also we've seen this within Advent Children, and the white light seems to be, like, symbolic of death and or the life stream. Also, it just so happens that this scene right here from Advent Children is Aerith and Zack like standing at the doors to the Sector 5 church. I just thought that was an interesting observation. We also had Cloud and Zack talking amongst this bright white light in Advent Children during the Sephiroth fight until he gets the motivation to beat Sephiroth. So we always have this light following Zack throughout the compilation and every time we've ever seen him amongst this light, he's been dead. So I can see where people are coming to that conclusion. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with it, but I can see that. You also have, like, the fact that whenever he explodes through the door, like, nobody within the church reacts to it. I know they're, like, mourning and grieving, but still. And also, again, the unaccounted for time between Zack's last stand and what seems to be the destruction of Sector 7. Like, what's been going on this whole time? And a lot of the speculation is that maybe he's dead, maybe he's in the live stream, so on and so forth. I'm just telling you what's being discussed out there. I don't know that I necessarily agree with it all. I do think, again, that they are very, very good observations and discussions. I, I just don't know how much truth there is to them. Some other people have also said or pointed out that, like, the church that Zach is standing outside of is different from the church within Remake. I don't see a difference. Somebody else also commented on my video and said that, like, the flowers within the church during the Zach segment are different from the base game flowers. But to me, they look exactly the same. There's yellow and white flowers. Other people have also said that they think the church looks a lot nicer inside during the Zack segment versus like base game. It doesn't look as run down and dirty and dusty. And I can kind of see it, but I don't know what the implication would be there. Like maybe it's taking place in the past, I guess, before it gets a super run down. But it doesn't exactly explain the absence of Aerith or why people are within the church. So I'm not entirely sure what that would mean. Because if these are people from the Sector 7, like, destruction, like, that, in the remake timeline, in our timeline, just happened. Like, that happens, and we pretty much, we go to, like, the underground facility and all that other shit, but we pretty much go straight to the Shinner building, and then, like, the game ends, right? Like, this shit happened pretty recently, so it's not, it can't be that far in the past. If these people are from Sector 7, like, some people have speculated that maybe they're, like, people from, like, the Sector 1 explosion, the beginning of the game, maybe this is when this is taking place with Zack, so that could be it as well, I don't entirely know. There is, however, one concrete difference in detail from the Zack ending segment church and the base game church. And I think it's very, very important and something we've kind of discussed in the past with other videos. So, whenever Zack walks in and you get to see within the church, you see in the background a wooden cross-like symbol. 
This wooden cross, as we're going to refer to it as, does not exist in base game remake. If you actually go to chapter 8, whenever you fall into the church, the whole Aerith Reno segment, if you look at this, it's actually not there or made of stone. And when I say that is, maybe this is like where they would mount the cross, so to speak, on the concrete right there. Or maybe they eventually made it out of stone or concrete. That way it just kind of stays there forever. It just stands the test of time. Obviously, wood eventually rots and goes away. But clearly, you can see the shape there of it. But it's not made of wood like it is in the Zack scene. So this, I think, is huge. I think it's important. I think it matters. And I mentioned this is related to something we've talked about in the past. Now, we did a video some time ago about the two different Midgar. So whenever Cloud's in the Singularity floating above Midgar, the Midgar below him is distinctly the Midgar from the original Final Fantasy VII because of like the kanji symbols on the side of the reactor that are within like dark colored boxes. Whereas within Remake, there's just like the numbers of the reactors and the kanji symbol just sitting on the side of the reactor. They're very different. And with the original Final Fantasy VII, it had the kanji symbols within the dark colored boxes. So what that meant is that like within the Singularity is the original FF7's Midgard. Now what that means is hard to say. Are they recreating it? Is it the actual timeline for the original FF7? Who knows exactly. Also forgot to mention that the Singularity Midgar and the original FF7's Midgar has like these platforms that are like out past the walls of Midgar. Like they're expanding the city to like build onto eventually, but there's nothing there yet. Whereas with the remakes Midgar, they already have these platforms and they clearly have a bunch of shit already built onto them. So again, very distinctly different Midgars. Anyways, how this all comes together is that the wooden cross that's in the Zack ending of Intermission that isn't in base game remake actually appears in the original Final Fantasy VII. So right here we have the above view while you're in the church where you can kind of see the back of the church. And clearly, of course, the wooden cross is right there. I've been saying for a very long time now, my dudes, that I think all the tiny details matters in these like important scenes where there's the timeline fuckery or whatever's going on, right? There's clearly a reason, a story reason from the development side of things that there wasn't this wooden cross all throughout the game of Remake. And then with the Zack scene we get at the end of Intermission, we're seeing a wooden cross that only exists in the original Final Fantasy VII. If I had to make my bold claim, I think this is confirmation, or I guess more confirmation, that we definitely fucked with the timelines. What I think happened, and this has been a, a theory for a long time, is that we were within the Singularity fighting the Whispers and Sephiroth and shit. What happens outside of the Singularity, we're not affected by. So I think our group came out into the altered timeline, which is how you can explain Zack being alive and it making sense because we're in a di completely different timeline. Our group wouldn't even know. They came out of the Singularity and pretty much left Midgar right away. If they actually went back into Midgar and visited shit, they'd probably notice that things are different. The only thing it doesn't explain, and I've talked about this a few times in the past, is copies of our characters because we, were, we came into a different timeline, right? But Cloud and Barrett and Tief and all of them are still going to exist. And we even seen Zack dragging a damn near unconscious Cloud to Midgar at the end of Remake Part 1. So where's that Cloud at? Because we see Zack at the Sector 5 Church, but we don't see a Cloud. And we also see him still with the Buster Sword. So something I just thought of while watching back through the video and editing and recording and stuff is that we talked about the, the time that's missing between Zack's Last Stand and the destruction of Sector 7. But people have talked about during the end segment, whenever like the little sparkly shit's falling from the sky, that like the, the Sector 7 isn't destroyed, right? So what if, and hear me out on this, we came out of the Singularity with the merge timeline, Zack's new timeline, whatever, but a little bit in the past. Like, we think we're coming out of the Singularity right after we defeated, like, President Shinra, Shinra building highway stuff, but what if that's not actually where we came out and joined up with this new timeline? That would explain why Zack doesn't seem to be aware of the destruction within Midgar. Maybe the Sector 7 destruction hasn't happened yet within this timeline. Again, because we're a little bit in the past, it would also explain the absence of time. Like, where's Zack been for weeks or months? There's a lot of time between Last Stand and the Sector 7 Collapse. Maybe he hasn't been that long in this timeline for Zack. I don't really know, then, how you explain the people within the church if they're not from the Sector 7 destruction. But again, this is like a new timeline. Who knows what the butterfly effect was of destroying the Whispers. A million different things could have happened. Hopping back to the calm stuff I mentioned earlier in the video that I want to come back to. Maybe the reason that it's in a deserty setting is because of the new timeline, but also... It might just be a design decision. Like, Calm's kind of on the edge of the wasteland of Midgar. So maybe they just decided to kind of expand it all the way. Maybe when we get closer to Calm, there's a little bit more greenery in the area. Even with the scene right here, if you look off to the left before the scene ends, like to the side of the road, there is like some green bushes and shrubbery and shit growing. So maybe it just gets a little bit greener as we get closer to Calm. Anyways, my dudes, that is pretty much the video. Big, big shout out to Zelda Link 100 over on the Intermission Complete Discussion thread on Reddit. They're the one who mentioned the different crosses. I noticed the wooden cross in the original Final Fantasy VII Church myself, but they're the reason I was looking into the crosses at all. I think it's important. I think it matters. We've talked about there being two different Midgars in the past. we talked about the OG Midgar being within Remake, and I think this is just further confirmation of that. Anyways, my dudes, that's the video. 
Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We'll see more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter, Dash DadYT, and my Discord. The links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys. Aerith? I used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I mean, nobody out here has got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like Coltrane, we in here. Like Rogaine, or leave it. Like Cobain.